everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming to my graduation recital. It is so great to be back all the way from, from New York, um, but um, I really, really miss this place and I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, it's a pretty special opportunity for me to have this concert. Um, while I wrote all of these pieces during my time at Curtis, none of them were actually performed here. So there are pieces spanning from when I was 18 and brand new here to the last piece that you just heard. I wrote my last semester here um, this, this past spring. Um, so the piece you just heard, played by Tian Yu, was called A Petticoat. Um, and I heard him play it in the master's violin auditions here, and he did such a great job. I asked him to play it on this concert. Um, and so that piece uh, was based on the very short poem, A Petticoat by Gertrude Stein. And the next piece you're going to hear is also based on a poem, like a lot of my pieces. Um, it's a poem by E.E. E. Cummings, who's my favorite poet, and the poem is Infinite Juke Throb Smoke. And I would recite this poem to you, but I really would not be doing it justice. Um, e. E. Cummings plays a lot with syntax and sentence structure. He makes up words, he throws punctuation around, he plays with spacing. Um, so unfortunately, I wasn't able to print it out for you, which I would have loved to do. Um, but instead, I'll just have to describe it. Um, basically, he plays around a lot with um, using very evocative words, making up words. And it, it seems like a very kind of violent poem most of the time. But at the end, there's a single normal line that's it's snowing, isn't that perfectly wonderful? So it's this kind of crazy, wacky poem um, that at, at the end of the day is just describing snowfall, which I found is really interesting. So I hope you enjoy.
Hello again. Um, there is going to be a lot of stage changes happening, so I might be talking for a while. Actually, one minute. I forgot my paper. Here we go. <clears throat> um, so I forgot to mention, you might have noticed that that was not Anya playing the cello. That was Matthew Christakos. Unfortunately, we lost Anya to a stomach bug this morning, but Matthew stepped in at the last minute and he saved the day. And that was incredible. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to introduce the next two pieces to you. Um, the next piece that you're going to hear um, is a piece for bassoon and electronics, and it is very much a product of the pandemic. Um, I wrote this piece in the, midst, in the midst of the pandemic, actually a series. It's part of a series called The Room Series. And um, as I was writing this series, I was, as we all were, feeling very isolated. Um, and I came across a philosopher whose name is David White, who talked about solitude and how solitude is not necessarily loneliness because we have a relationship with our surroundings. Um, so I took that idea, the idea of the relationship with the surroundings, and I really ran with it. Um, I wanted to create this series as an exploration of that relationship. So instead of writing a bunch of solo pieces, um, I chose to write a lot of duets um, that I refer to as instrument plus room duets. So I recorded a lot of sounds from my childhood bedroom, where I was at the time, um, and wrote four different pieces that explored the relationship between the self and the room in different ways. So the piece that you're going to hear today is Four Blurred Walls, um, and that is the third out of the four pieces in the series. Um, and in that piece, uh, the room has really an oppressive role. So the idea is that the bassoon is kind of seeing the room through tears for blurred walls. Yeah, don't mind this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Very cool thing happening behind me. Um, and so in the piece, um, th it's like the room is closing in on the bassoon. So you'll hear the selection of sounds that you'll hear, um, you know, a fan, there's some birds chirping outside of my room, um, just more ambient noises in this specific part of the series. Um, yeah, so that is Four Blurred Walls. And then after that, you'll hear a piece for a string quartet and drum set, and the title is Cockroaches in Autumn. Um, and this is based on a short story by Lydia Davis that's also entitled Cockroaches in Autumn. And actually, Lydia Davis is one of my favorite writers, and I was introduced to her in my freshman class with Mr. Fitz. And so um, I'm very grateful to him for introducing Lydia Davis to me. And so as this is all happening, I'm going to read you Cockroaches in Autumn by Lydia Davis. <laughs> <clears throat> On the white painted bolt of a door that is never opened, a, thin, a thick line of tiny black grains, the dung of cockroaches. Boats were scattered over the water near Dover Harbor at odd angles, like the cockroaches surprised in the kitchen at night before they move. The youngest are so bright, so spirited, so willing. He sees the hand coming down and runs the other way. There is too far to go, or he is not fast enough. At the same time, we admire such a will to live. I am alert to small moving things and spin around toward a floating dust moat. I am alert to darker spots against a lighter background, but these are only the roses on my pillowcase. A new autumn stillness in the evening. The windows of the neighborhood are shut. A chill sifts into the room from the panes of glass. Behind a cupboard door, they squat inside a long box eating spaghetti. The stillness of death when the small creature does not move away from the lowering hand. From inside a white paper bag comes the sound of a creature scratching. One creature, I think. 
But when I empty the bag, a crowd of them scatter from the heel of rye bread like rye seeds across the counter, like raisins. How kindly I feel toward another species of insect in the house, its gauzy wings, its confusion, its blundering walk down the lampshade. It doesn't think to run away. The white autumn light in the afternoon. They sleep behind a child's drawings on the kitchen wall. I tap each piece of paper and they burst out from the edges of pictures that are already filled with shooting stars, missiles, machine guns, landmines. This is just an excerpt. I, only, I read my favorite lines, but that is Cockroaches in Autumn, or some of it, by Lydia Davis. And I think we are almost ready. So, thank you.
Hello again. So before I introduce the last piece, I do want to say my thank yous. There are so many, so many thank yous that I have to say, but first I'm gonna say thank you to all of my composition teachers over the past five years at Curtis, and there are a lot of them, so get ready. Um, <laughs> David Ludwig, Jennifer Higdon, and Nick, Nick DeBerardino, Amy Beth Kirsten, Richard Daniel Poor, Steve Mackey, Jonathan Bailey Holland. Did I get them all? I think so. <laughs> I'm sorry if I, if I ever got someone, but um, really, um, I could not be where I am today compositionally without them, and I really appreciate all of their guidance, and, and I miss them. Um, and thank you so much to my composition colleagues who are here for, for making my time at Curtis just amazing. And also thank you to all the other faculty um, at Curtis who also made my time very enriching, even if you weren't my composition teacher. And also just a huge thank you to these musicians. Um, they're very busy and they really put time into these pieces for me and I really appreciate it. They did a wonderful job. Um, and so thank you to, to all of them and all, to all of my friends and family for all of their support for the past five years as well, of course. Um, and so the final piece you'll be hearing is for string octet and electronics. Um, it's based on or inspired by Hedy Lamarr. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Hedy Lamarr. She was one of the most considered the most beautiful woman in film. Um, she's a very popular actress in the 1940s and 50s. Um, what people don't know about her is that she also was an inventor on the side, and she actually invented a technology. It's a, a spread spectrum um, technology, a frequency hopping technology that she hoped would be helpful um, in World War II for the American torpedoes um, to not get jammed by, by the enemies. And um, unfortunately, and she worked to get a patent on this with the composer, George Antile, but unfortunately the patent was seized because she was born in Austria and was considered an enemy of the state. Um, and so she never received credit for her work, but the US Navy did implement it later in the 60s and that technology that she thought of is actually the basis of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and GPS, all the technology that we enjoy today. Um, but unfortunately, um, she became a recluse later in life, had a lot of botched plastic surgeries, um, and did not want to be seen. Um, but she's really just an incredible, intelligent human being, um, and I was really inspired by her. Um, and so the piece you're about to hear, the electronic track is made up of an interview that she gave on the Merv Griffin show um, in the 60s, in 1968, I believe. Um, yes, yeah, she's, a, she's a wonderful lady who often described, even though her beauty was what gave her fame and money, she often described it as her curse. Um, so thank you all so much for joining me tonight. It's, it's been wonderful, and please enjoy.
entire city here sound like a fan club. I said, did you see Eddie Lamar backstage? He said, no, I didn't see her. And I said, I haven't seen her yet either. And he said, oh, I've loved her in movies. Uh, uh, since I can remember, it's the most beautiful woman. Yeah, and she's really a nutcat. Yeah, and that's the way I feel, too. We'll, we'll all see her together. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Miss Hedy Lamar. <laughs>
tell you what your image is. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
SAYA